Welcome to Have a Drink, the show where you learn along with us about what you drink. I'm Brittany Lee Walker. I'm Justin Frazier. I'm Christopher Walker. And I'm Casey Price. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> hey, howdy, hey. We're, we're a little late. Uh, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, you know, better late than... I don't know. <laughs> I ran out of ideas. We, uh... Cause maybe... We, the... No. We had a very nice dinner supplied by my boss and uh another supervisor and so we were just we were there and i was like oh we should we should probably go we should, we should probably go now and she's <laughs> like we should probably go now and then he comes out oh would you like anything for dessert and she's like well i'll have a piece of the chocolate cake to go of course to go of course <laughs> everybody else was getting dessert and I, we weren't paying for it um <laughs> but yeah so we rushed home and and here we are so it's a little late and i'm sorry <laughs> Uh, and I may or may or may not have a good buzz going to start the start the episode with, so we're doing really well. A promo if well, a promotion if, my shoes. if <laughs> Jeff Ruby's was willing to pay us to say, hey, go say that our top ten rated steakhouse, known for some of the best steaks in the country, you know, we'll, we'll pay you good money. Go go put that word out there. Then I'll take that and free steaks. Yes, Jeff because... Ruby's precinct in in uh, Cincinnati. <laughs> in fairness, I would be totally willing to be paid in steak. Yeah, and that steak. Yes. yes, that steak was like that. butter. <laughs> oh, it's so good! It's the best. Can we change the Patreon? Can we? Can we get steak donations instead? I, I'll I take, take it like once a year. I'll take you, it. You've heard of steak bets? I'm willing to take steak treon. Steak <laughs> steak treon. <laughs> Unfortunately, like server costs can't be paid in steak. <laughs> <laughs> but think of the food savings. We can exactly. pass that on. I'll pass it on oh. to you. You can you can help this beard right. grow full and thick with a steak. All right, we should probably start talking about this. We're already we got... drinking, so yeah. Um, yeah. Some, let let's go ahead into this first beer. Somebody. Yeah, Anybody? we've got the uh, the classic. The classic. We're pulling out of the snowpack for Sierra Nevada, uh, and it is the classic pale ale. Pale ale began as a home brewer's dream, grew into an icon. Uh, and inspired countless brewers to follow their passions of follow a passion of their own, a unique piney and grapefruit aromas for the uh, uh, from the use of whole cone American hops. I don't know what that means. Um, uh, whole cone means instead of pellets. Uh, we will oh. find out more about that in our hops show coming up in a week. Those hor- uh, yeah. yes, those horrible yeah. horrible pellets. Don't don't do that. <laughs> no, you eat them. <laughs> like just like they're like they're tic tacs. They, um, they, they smell so much better than they taste. <laughs> anyway, uh, the whole cone, whole cone. I, I don't know what I keep wanting to say. Corn, whole cone. Uh, American hops have uh, fascinated beer drinkers for decades, and this has made uh, made this beer a classic. Yet it remains new, complex, and surprising to thousands of beer beer drinkers every day. It is as it always has been, a natural bottle conditioned and fresh, refreshingly bold. Uh, it's got ale yeast. It's bittering hops are Magnum, PI, and Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finishing hops are Cascade. Uh, I like that they give the breakdown of the, the the bittering hops and the finishing hops. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you've got uh, the malts are two roll pale and uh, caramel. And then ABVs five point six percent, IBUs thirty eight. Beer adv- advocate score four point zero three out of five. Uh, oh, oh, and apparently this is a five-gallon homebrew recipe is available on their website. Which you don't really <laughs> find that a lot of places. They're like, no, you want to 
try and make this one yourself, go right ahead. I mean, to make this beer, it would take a lot of ability. It's just so clean. It's so well made. Mm-hmm. All the, I mean, this beer is the beer that that brewmasters drink. I, I have a feeling if you surveyed and took a, a poll of all the, the breweries in the U.S., what do you drink if it's not your beer? This is probably the one that they go to. Oh, yeah. This buddy is... of mine, buddy of mine always has this in his refrigerator, mm-hmm. more or less. And when we first started hanging out, I was not into IPAs. And I'm like, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I've got some of this here. I'm drinking those now going like, oh, man, so yeah. good. It's and that it's is a the standard. difference apparently two years of pr- semi professional drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is one that this is what's one of the beers that started American craft as we know it today, and it's one of the reasons everyone keeps coming back. This is you know, like people love this beer. If you uh, ever tune into Ritual Misery, you're always going to find Kent and Amos at one point in their show drinking one of these because it is or if you see kent on uh on twitter you may see pictures of just like you can tell there's been a ritual misery show there's there's sierra nevada bottles strewn throughout the house oh yeah if if you are at south by so wasted uh coming up as everyone seems to be piling down to that area um i'm sure they will all be drinking this because you can get it absolutely everywhere Mm mm-hmm and this, I mean, where it's the classic pill ale, it's got a little bit of that bitterness, but not a ton. This is, I mean, this is 37 IBUs. Um, this is this is in that land where we normally don't even realize that there are bittering hops in in a beer. Hmm. Yeah, it. I was gonna say it's 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 a nice, I, I don't know, clean-ish hop. It's not overpowering. No, it's, yeah. It's just you get the flavor, and it's like, oh, here you go, enjoy. It's like uh, um... it's. What we it's said be- not blowing my tongue out. It, it's like what we said before with the uh, like you you can mow your lawn drinking this <laughs> or oh, whatever yeah. like the summertime beer. Yeah, I mean being at five five and a half percent alcohol, something like that, you're looking at something that is nearly the same strength as a Budweiser. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's a it's the type of beer that when you want flavor and not just <laughs> I was liquid. Say, but with flavor. <laughs> yeah. So when I hear when I hear lawnmower beers lately, I just think of back home. And I'm like, no, you don't want to drink and try to mow back home. <laughs> too much 45 degree angle. Mowing. Yeah, you're gonna <laughs> yeah. spill. It. It's a challenge. <laughs> it's like you're just like, oh yeah, we'll just drink. Oh god, I'm gonna die. <laughs> uh, For sure. But it's, it's good. I, I'm I'm liking this a lot. Um, it is. It's so like it is. There's a clean feeling, but it's not like a that soapy taste because you you kind of wonder when you say clean like. Well, does that mean <laughs> that you're just like drinking Dawn? Like, what is what is I mean, clean? But I mean, it's like yeah, a, it's a, I I associate it with just a lack of anything nasty or dirty in the beer. So yeah, it's it's like a there's, clean finish. There's it's very it's light and and not um, yeah. what's a it's not it harsh. Clo- clowingly on your tongue. Yeah, all the yeah, time. yeah. But yeah, it's good. I like it a lot. I think that it has big flavor. But it doesn't hang around. Like that's yeah. again, that's kind of why we started with this one. Is this isn't going to overpower the next beer we have? It's not going to overpower any of these beers. No other beer, but it's still going to be this nice, full flavored beer. Yeah, and this one's a good like. Whenever I, I like, I mean, they're going to put this beer in their their pack because it's it's a right. it's a flagship. It's the Boston yeah, Lager for Sierra Nevada. It. But. Um, this is this is great summer, winter, fall, whenever. Uh, this is a great. They they have it in cans, so it's a good beer to go out to the boat with, or mm-hmm. to go out to the pool with, and so you're able to have a few there, and and um, you know not have to worry about the glass, but also have something that's refreshing and cool and and uh, lower alcohol ish. Yeah, this is probably Casey, their I most have... widely available. I'd have to say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I was what I was gonna joke though was that. Uh, uh, Casey has left has has left me some beer up here that I've gone through, and I'm just realizing it's freezing to cold. There's snow everywhere, and I'm just sitting in my apartment drinking pa- like drinking pale ales. I'm going, this is not what I usually associate with this weather. But <laughs> no. no, okay, wait, um, we can get to that shortly. <laughs> we're okay. we're building to it. Let's uh read a little bit about Sierra Nevada though. Yeah. Mm. So Sierra Nevada Brewing Company, founded in 1979 with founders Ken Grossman and Paul Camusi, uh, expanding their home brewing hobby into a brewery in Chico, California. 
um, the yeast that you can actually buy to ferment your homebrew for these these types of beers um, likely fermented out or, or, or captured at Sierra Nevada's brewery. Um, you can actually go and find the Chico yeast strain is the reason I bring that up. It's called Chico. Just, oh. just picturing Pokemon, but with yeast. Just <laughs> I choose you. Bretomyces. <laughs> Uh, along with the brewery's location, Grossman claims the company's name comes from his love of hiking in the mountains of the Sierra Nevada. With $50,000 in loans from friends and family, Grossman and Camusi rented a 3,000-square-foot warehouse and pieced together discarded dairy equipment and scrapyard metal to create their brewing equipment. Um, this, this is definitely something that a lot of the breweries around this time frame were, were putting together. They're actually called uh, Frankenbrew Systems where you took old uh, discarded dairy equipment that, that works. It's all stainless. It's all sanitized uh, or sanitizable, I guess you could say. Um, and it's easy to, to kind of put that stuff together because you've got to heat uh, a lot of this stuff up to a, a pasteurization temperature anyway. So it's, it, it's ready for heat. It's ready for a little bit of pressure. It's, it's all good on all those fronts. So they, they like to use this. Um, they later were able to acquire secondhand copper brewing kettles from Germany before moving to their larger current brewing facility in 1989. Uh, those copper brewing style kettles are still pretty prominent, I think, in most of their brewing applications. They, in, when they built the new facility in Asheville, North Carolina, I think we we may. I don't think we talked about that in this, but when they built that new facility in Asheville, um, right as you walk in, there's so much copper. They go back to a lot of that copper and rich, rich mm -hmm. copper coloring. And uh, I don't know if it's on the inside and outside, but I would hope that, that it goes, the kettles are copper in and out. Mm -hmm. um, the first batch brewed on premise was its Pell L in November of 1980. The following year, the brewery introduced Celebration, an IPA, which it continues to release as a winter seasonal. The company sold 950 barrels of beer in its first year, and it doubled that amount in the second. The company's first employee was Steve Harrison, who was put in charge of marketing and sales. That's right. Go for your marketing and sales first. That's how you become one of the most <laughs> well-known breweries in the world. Yeah, uh, I mean, you got to come up with a plan for that stuff anyway. So yeah, I mean, I'm serious about that. That's that's yeah. a you know marketing and sales. That's a big thing. Hmm. Um, get your first two guys that that know beer, and then go to marketing and sales. The head brewer is Steve Dressler, who has been with the brewery since 1983 when its output was 25 to 30 barrels per week. So you're looking at uh, some fairly um, low production right there. Yeah. Uh, the company distributed the beer itself in the 1980s, struggling with financial and marketing problems. A 1982 article in the San Francisco Chronicle highlighted the brewery as having a, its beer sold in prominent restaurants such as Berkeley's Ches Panay. Panisse? Oh, Chez Panisse. Okay, okay. Chez Panisse. Um, and helped uh, establish a market for Sierra Nevada's bill, beer. And the bill. <laughs> Probably the bill, too, yeah. <laughs> We're going to be honest. Beer. The malt bill. Um, yeah. Yeah, now they've got the, the West Coast and East Coast um, facilities. They've got the Asheville, North Carolina. Beautiful brewing facility opened up about three years ago, I think. Three or four years ago, and um, Gosh, was it that long? they do most of their flagships on both coasts now. So we probably got this from the, we probably got this from the West Coast Brewery. Yeah, or, sorry, I the think East Coast Brewery. That's how they divided up which breweries uh, distributing where was mm -hmm. basically the Mississippi River. If you're on yeah. one side, the main brewery gets you. If you're on the other, the Asheville gets you. Yeah, the Asheville. The Asheville. <laughs> So most of their beer that comes out of there um, is brewed to the same standards. I think they, they treat their water to even – so the water going into the process is almost identical to the water that you would get in on the other coast. Hmm. So um, that was, I think, one of the big reasons they decided to locate there. That Not only was there a great uh, beer culture, but also the environment, the water was all good for that as well. I'm just saying there's, uh, there's great water here in Kentucky. <laughs> our water is more suited and uh, we haven't done the water episode but we we are no. more suited for a little bit darker style actually yeah and bourbon and bourbon <laughs> that is on the list Mostly bourbon. that water episode that is on the list that's for sure I was gonna yeah say, we, we touched on some of the things that were in water but i think we could really take a <laughs> take a 30 to 45 minute dive into 
what it means to have different water. I know, I know what you mean, but whenever I hear, yeah, we touched a little bit what's in water, uh, two hydrogen and one oxygen. Most of the time, you would hope that's the base. I mean, fingers crossed. Because nerds. Nah. There's other <laughs> things in it as well. Yeah. That's why we drink. That's why we drink stuff with alcohol. You can't trust water by itself. You right? can't. It's true. <laughs> so next up. Woo. Next right. one. Uh, what is next? Winter tide. Uh, winter tide. So we, we have the winter tide ale. Um, so. In times of old, no holiday feast was complete without a tankard of spiced ale served next to a roaring fire. Which that sounds great. Uh, that's a tradition we'd like to see continue, tankard optional, with our winter tide ale, brewed with rich caramel like malts and a hint of coriander, cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. Winter so I'm not tide. I'm not it looks gorgeous. Oh, yeah. It does. Yes. Like, look at that head. Look how it poured. I'm just like, oh, that's. Okay, that's lovely. I'll I'll give you that. Oh, yeah. But I'm always I'm I'm now nervous around winter beers. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh winter tide is reminiscent of mom's favorite holiday cookies. Look at the color. So um it says that the the yeast is ale yeast. Um bittering hops are German Magnum, finishing hops yeah. Madarina and Laurel. Um malts are two row pale, Munich honey, oats, especial and Carafa, 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 Carafa. Um, six percent. Carafa ABV. comes in uh, three different levels oh. depending on how dark it is. Um, the three is usually made just to add, um, just to add color, and and basically you'll crush up just a tiny bit of it and put it in, hmm. um, either as you're getting ready to boil or right at the very end of doing your mash, just to add a really dark color to that beer without adding any sort of flavor to it. Oh, okay, well, that's cool. Well, it does. It does. I mean, good job then on the color thing. Um, <laughs> just glanced over. Fitz needs you to have a have a drink raid. <laughs> you don't realize how close we are. Yeah. To such a thing. This is the smallest drinking horn I own. Meaning we own several. <laughs> that I think I have one that holds two to three liters. Well, on our our wedding horn. Yeah. And then our wedding horn, and I have a Viking Berserker axe right over here. So we're we're good to go in a raid. We're ready, yeah. We are um, being raided right now. Uh, so are we? Ah, oh, it's a raid. Oh! <laughs> so the Vikings uh, are at the gates. Finishing the beer real quick. Um, so it's six percent ABV. 20 IBUs and the beer advocate score is 3.8 out of 5. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> I can see that 3.8 because I'm, or yeah, is this one? Three, yeah, I can see that 3.8 because it's, it's a solid beer, but it's not as balanced, I think, as it could be. Um, this is straight up gingerbread. Like, I take yeah, a sip of this and smells, that's. Oh, it smells just like. I love gingerbread, so I am all about this. I'm afraid now that I've said that, she's not going to drink it. <laughs> you can just pour it right um, there. Just pour it. I'm getting a lot of astringency at the back end. Mm -hmm. um, like it's tightening up my tongue and really causing it to be kind of dry out my tongue. And, and I get this little, I don't know, like uh, like when you burn your tongue and you feel it, it's really rough afterwards. Yeah. That's the kind of texture that I'm getting on my tongue right now. I do Weird. get that. But I love gingerbread, and I love every flavor this is putting off. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Let's top her off. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Not a fan. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's not as bad as I I thought it was going to be. As, as much as I was afraid it was going to be. Mm. It's it's not something that I would seek out, but it's, mm. it's solid... Uh, it's a solid, you know, winter beer. I just, you know, there's some spices I just don't think need to be in my beer. Like that much ginger. Uh, I I like a lot of spiced beers. I like I, weird stuff. I like mostly. spicy as in like my tongue's on fire. Oh, so no, I, okay. I like um, stuff with like cinnamon and nutmeg and like, you know, the, the those kind of spices too. I do not like this. <laughs> it is, what? I, I'm I getting... Like it's very sweet to me. Um, really? It, it, it tastes very sweet, and I'm getting a lot of ginger. 
I mean, no joke. It tastes like gingerbread smells. And I say smells because I don't eat gingerbread. <laughs> because I don't like ginger. <laughs> I understand. I can, okay, I love all the spices that I'm getting in this. And I can get over the astringency on my tongue. I definitely get it. My tongue, from the first sip, it feels weird. And I keep, like, dragging it against the roof of my mouth because of this. I'm like, God, what is mm -hmm. up with that? But it tastes so good. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yay I feel like for you, you guys. would definitely have more of that nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger flavor um, mm -hmm. two months ago. When this was, what, was this bottled in? Yeah. September. So mm -hmm. uh, I feel like those flavors have probably dropped out a little bit. I, um, yeah, to a point. I, I think, I mean, I got a, a hint of nutmeg, no cinnamon. It really takes me having to swirl it hard to get that. Yeah, um... I'm getting, I it was it was a lot of ginger for me, a little bit of nutmeg and no cinnamon at all. So to me, I I got all of like maybe two flavors, and that that's just and then the sweetness. So I'm just like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that one. All right, good. Again, it does smell like uh, it's it smells like cookies. I'll I'll give mm -hmm. you that. Mm. gingerbread cookies which are not my favorite cookies <laughs> yeah uh, it'll get you drunk <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, i mean i'm feeling it on this one it, it'll Six get you percent. there um, well while you're getting there uh Brittany, you want to give us a few announcements yeah let me see because i need a minute to get through mine and yours yeah yeah mm. um. <laughs> not a chuggable beer all right. Um, so first of all, we wanted to announce, um, we've been trying to push this as much as we can. Uh, if you get value or entertainment from this show <laughs> and would like to support it, uh, you can head over now to patreon.com slash have a drink show, which is also now on the, on the overlay. <laughs> um, also, we wanted to... Oh, good Lord, it is there. Yeah, I threw that on there earlier and was like, you know, I'm going to make room for like the bottle cam and the chat and blah, blah, blah. We'll see how that works. Um, and I'll throw the Patreon link in there because whatever. Um, so we also wanted to show about uh, the upcoming episodes, like the events. So one, we've kind of redone the homepage a little bit. So the whole website has a different view to it. And um, but the schedule is still updated on there for as much as it can be. We do need to add some... Um, uh, video episodes in so like more of the tasting episodes mm -hmm. but um our next episode is going to be saturday january 20th 9 p.m eastern time of course um as as opposed to today <laughs> uh and is our second beer science episode and this one's going to be about hops so that yeah. one actually should be really interesting is it only our second since uh, maybe it's second since we've switched over to the since we've yeah. beer science since we've yeah, gone beer science not... yes officially titling and such yeah no. yeah because i thought we had started it earlier because i kept like i know i've made the beer science joke more than once yeah we did uh some homebrew specific episodes but i think we really mm -hmm. wanted to kind of branch out and do more um you know if you're drinking a beer this is kind of what you can look for not just when you're trying to add it to a beer that you're you're trying to make at home yeah, initially we were like putting homebrew as a separate kind of labeling, I think. So yeah, we we did that. I don't know that we're trying to keep it together, guys, and <laughs> some of it doesn't isn't as consistent on the labeling, but it's fine. Um, now the episode after that one is going to be a special one, and I know that you know we generally try not to be very local. Um, I but we I had, mean but since as, it's in the chat, we should. We should at least mention. Yes, As, since, um, since the the gnome has graced us with his presence this evening. Uh, the episode after our next one, so in two more weeks, uh, end of the month basically, uh, it's going to be a special localized episode for us. So we will be covering Cincinnati brewing history. And um, we're going to have a special guest, Gnarly Gnome, the host of Cincy Brewcast. Hashtag who is in our chat show. tonight? Hashtag crossover. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> since he brewcast is uh, what I see in the chat. Yes. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah. Hashtag gnome show. Yep. <laughs> so I, I think we're gonna be kicking that off. Uh, if you happen to have been local, yeah, at noonish. Uh, we're, we're, we're saying twelve thirty officially because they don't open until noon. So yeah. But we're gonna be recording live from the Wooden Cask Brewery in Newport, Kentucky, and um. 
that will be on uh I don't have the date on here. January 27th is yes. supposed to be the date, though. <laughs> and it is going to be, I'm pretty sure he'll correct me if I'm wrong, though. Uh, it's going to be a double recording. So we'll be recording Have a Drink, and then we're going to be doing Cincy Brewcast. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hashtag dude floating. Dude floating. Just remember, <laughs> hashtag dude floating. Yes. Float on. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com for that joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, look, that's, that's, that is a weird thing that I found out happens, you know, in my neighborhood. So it, I'm, I'm a little, so yeah, dude floating, uh, we can talk before or after or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but, we'll uh, talk about that in after. I'm okay. a little intrigued. My God. Okay. So we're pony gonna... up to the bar so you can figure out what we're talking about. Yes. Patreon.com slash have a drink show. Uh, but no, like when we <laughs> ever get the, oh, um, gnome. Uh, your 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 sentence there. I'm going to screw all kinds of stuff up. I the up is was off the bottom of the um, chat for me, and so all I got was I'm going to screw all kinds of stuff. <laughs> well, that's that's nice. I okay, mean, now I see the up. That's oh, how geez. we get baby gnomes. Um. Okay. So yeah, when we get a. By the way, we have so many ideas for when we get our merchandise stuff going because dude, hashtag dude floating has to be a shirt or like a sticker or, you know, something. Can I get that yeah, on my it's... flamethrower? <laughs> or like a koozie, I guess. Dude floating the coloring book. Anyway, uh, do we have any more announcements? <laughs> do multiple shows. Um, I think that's it for the announcements today, actually. Okay. So cool. then... Yeah. Uh, are you ready to move on to the next beer, or are uh, we still... Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. For sure. Uh, this one, I want to say, made me laugh when Casey said, you should turn that one over before we start. I was like, why would I need to? And I turn it over, and I just see everything just go from the bottom <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah. The well, no. time that we've been doing the show, it's separated again for me. We got so, some I did it one more time. time before we... So this next one... We, uh, we got I... it ready, so... I've looked at some stuff online back when they first dropped these, and this is not a, oh, the haze fell out of it. No, there was never haze to this beer. Like, they call it... So why do they call it holiday haze if there's no haze? I beg to differ. Look at this thing now. Oh, Look deep into its haziness. (laughs) You probably see some of that particulate matter there. Because it was really their first attempt at a hazy IPA. Mm. I think it was their warm-up to... Warm up to their current offering, which actually I'm seeing from people is being received quite well. Okay, so while you're pouring that, speaking of hazy stuff, and okay, so we had made the predictions not only on 2016 but 2017's, um, you know, year in review kind of thing, and See more. Uh, we just got a pack of New Belgium's uh, Juicy IPA or whatever. What's it called? Juicy something? Juicy Haze. Juicy Haze. Juicy Haze IPA. So essentially, they're New England style. And it is actually really good. Like if you get, if you see that anywhere in the store, like it's really tasty. If you want to just grab a pack of that, um, that's for, that one's New Belgium, and it's it's one of the Voodoo Ranger series, actually. That creepy. I don't know what marketing person thought of the Voodoo Ranger thing. Oh, the little skeleton guy. It just creeps the <laughs> hell out of me. Well, I mean, we do like. I don't know. You know, it doesn't creep the hell out of me. The smell of this oh beer. Oh my gosh! It smells Holiday wonderful. Days. A kid. This smells like a New England. I will. Oh, it has. It hits all those notes on the nose. Fruity. I'm getting like some pineapple. Oh. Tyler. New England. Never heard of it. Of course. Uh, of course. The person in Maine. Never heard of it. Uh, this is really good. <laughs> Who's up for, for holiday? Well, tell us a little about it. Oh, yes. Uh, wait, I did the last one. Um, well then fine i'll take this one uh as the holiday season ramps up we all get busy so we're bringing you this all new ipa as a reminder to slow down and appreciate the special time heavy with intense fruit forward hop flavor mild bitterness and a smooth finish this is the perfect beer for the lead up to the holidays well we're a little after so it's the wind down the wind down <laughs> <laughs> let's all pause relax and snap out of that holiday haze so the yeast I mean, it's an IPA. It's an ale yeast. Uh, your bittering hops, again, they've bittered everything in this pack so far with Magnum. Uh, your finishing hops. If, if you can buy your bittering hops in bulk 
um, and get a better deal on them, go for it, do it, because you're not going to be able to taste a big difference in bittering hops. Um, if it's a good bittering hop that, that tastes good, and we'll talk more about humulone, cohumulone, and what the different um, what the different bittering parts in that hop are going to do with the bittering flavor. Um, but if you've got a good bittering hop, it really doesn't matter what it tastes like. So, hmm. Casey more or less just spoke, you know, gibberish to me when I heard cumulone. I was like, I don't know what this well, is. Sounds like a cloud. Uh, what, I think what he's getting at next... is uh, from these three beers, they've all used the bittering hop has been Magnum, but your finishing hops have all varied greatly. So mm. your finishing hops in this one are going to be Crystal and Citra, and it stands out, and it is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, your so malt is kind of uncommon for me to see that as a um, in in these types of beers. Hmm. So your malts, uh, you got a Pilsner malt, uh, you got your hall, you got your oats, you got your wheat. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, it I was is. wondering it's if he was going to read through oats. that. Yes, it, it's hall and oats. No, I thought you were making that up. I'm no, sorry. no, I was not. <laughs> No, I was making that up. <laughs> I have too much power when I have the duck in front of me. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, what? That's down. a real thing? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'm, I'm too buzzed for this, Bob. Don't do that to me. <laughs> ABV is at 6.5%. And IBU, 40. So that's kind of low. Beer Advocate score, 3.91 out of 5. Might be a little low. I've not had a chance to taste it yet. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I really like this. Oh, no, this that's... Is good. It's, it's juicy. I don't know if you see... Yeah, the haze... But... I don't know what pictures I had seen before, but the haze is real in this one. <laughs> it, it just looks like pineapple juice. Yeah. Oh, tastes like it, too. But it's, like... not, it's not blowing me away. Like, it's, it's good, but it's not... I've had better New England styles, but it's still really good and not... Um, again, it's not that bitterness, that, that bitter aftertaste, I guess. You know, yeah. once again, this beer is four months old, so or three, yeah. three and a half yeah. months old. So when you're judging on New England styles, it's kind of common to get them as fresh as possible. We know that's that's when they're best. So that's true. Um, you know, two months ago, this may have been a totally different beer. Yeah, because it's definitely right. not as juicy as it could be, as it should be, I guess. For a, a hazy <laughs> Tyler with uh, hazy dude. <laughs> hashtag hazy dude floating <laughs> hazy dude floating. We are going to have to do some explaining in post show. Mm-hmm. No, I, no, there is no not. explanation. I want a, a sniff, like some kind of glassware that's just got it etched in it. Hashtag dude floating. Well, I mean, that's, he was suggesting drinking horns. So, <gasps> yes. Yeah. I mean, my, my, gotta little find out where his sister made, got this one at. Monogrammed with a nice W. So, I don't know why. When I'm smelling this, but I'm smelling, I'm smelling something that's like, kind of acidic. <laughs> huh. Like, like. I don't know. Like, like, like the acidic like, fruit flavors. Like tomato acidic. Oh. One of the malts is acidulated malt, yeah. and acidulated malt is used because it is a, an acid malt. That's its other name. Um, so what you do is you take these malts you spray a little water on them you let them start to um create the bacteria in that that malt will start to create lactic acid on the outside and so the malt itself becomes very acidic now most of the time you use these malts to balance the the water so balance the ph in the water and so you add some acid malt if your ph is going to be too high you want to make a pell beer but your water is more suited for dark beers. You can add this acidulated malt to it and take away some of that calcium carbonate that mm. cr- helps uh, balance out the acidity. So you can bring that pH a little bit lower. What some people are doing are adding, if they their water is fine for a pale beer, beer, which we know Sierra Nevada's water is perfectly fine for a pale beer uh, because they make a great pale ale. What yeah. they'll do is they'll add that acidulated malt in there to give it a little bit more of a tartness and add some tart flavors to it, which I suspect is what they've done here um, in order to to kind of give you a little bit more of that acidic flavor. Now, the same aromas that you would get from a lactic acid bacteria could be the same aromas that you're picking up here. So some lactic acid may be in this beer, um, and, and that may be what you're smelling. 
maybe it something about it was just reminding me of uh uh reminded me of like a like like i said like a, a more of a tomatoey side of the acid um huh. don't ask me why i know that i'm just used to smelling <laughs> acid no i would almost side with you completely on that that there is something tomatoey about the acidity of this it, also, it sounds off Gnome the had wall. a couple options here. Holland oat, Holland oats floats dudes, or uh, dudes float Holland oats. Uh, sorry, I just I needed to get that out. Don't know where to go with that. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know. <laughs> um, this is different. Yeah. Um, for Sierra Nevada especially. Yeah. Um, so what what was this about their it's supposed to separate. I don't get that. Oh no, it was um, when we started talking pre-show. I a lot of the stuff I'd looked up about this beer, and people had poured it out, like showing glasses full of it, and it was clear, completely clear. So that's mm -hmm. I was <clears throat> initially on the thought. Oh well, I guess they just kind of missed the mark. Didn't quite get that New England haze in this or whatever. And then we could hold up our bottles, and you could see clearly through it. And then it was like when you were like, "Oh yeah, you need to flip them and uh, okay. get it, make sure so, you yeah, agitate just it." Having issues with the separation and yeah, and what they were trying to do for that. Um, I think this is an interesting first attempt, but I bet you they can. Build, well, they already build. have. They've put out in six packs. You can get their true blue New England IPA. Mm. I've heard good things. I haven't got to try it yet, but we are going to have to slap together a tasting episode. Mm for all the mass market New England IPAs. Mm, that'd be good, yeah. Go okay, well, with that sort of make build your own six pack taster. Yeah. Cool. Okay, okay. Can we all just stop rubbing all the beer fests in my face, please, in the chat? Come on. I'm going to post all the monkeys pushing laptops off of tables. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At least it's more like Bonobos. Because the two of them, the two of them that have been rubbing my face in it, are just doing it all the time now. Oh, you can't make it to the Barrel Age Beer Fest. Oh, it's gonna be some good beer there. Oh, you don't say. No. And then I had friends there who just they were texting me like we're out at dinner. He's like, oh, this is the line for CBS. And I was like, yeah, f that. <laughs> and then he was immediately like, oh, I tried to go get the Prairie Bourbon Paradise. It was gone instantly. <laughs> Oh. But at least we had amazing steak tonight that we didn't have to pay for. <laughs> Orgasmic steak. <laughs> that's that's our that's our our con There's no two ways. Price. <laughs> we can talk we can talk post show, but there is no questioning that steak was better than sex. <laughs> I don't know what to say on that. How about yours? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that that filet oh, mignon is like the, butter right there. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> moving on. White people rich steak. <laughs> Coffee stouts. Coffee stouts. I've oh. been excited about this one since we got the stuff on the on the dock. <laughs> like no joke. Man, we are yeah. running through this one. These are so good. So yes. coming up to this one, which was one of the reasons I wanted to get the pack. This has been an awesome pack. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no. Uh, this this has been an above average pack. Was that the reason you wanted to get this pack? Because this is an awesome pack. No, because of the coffee stout. Coffee stout. <laughs> that was the primary coffee. reason. Apparently. Well, a cup of Joe and a bold beer are both cold weather companions. I like so, my coffee stouts cold brewed, and this one says it's cold brewed coffee. It so, cold. Oh. well, I'm okay with that. Spoilers. So he was the getting next to that. <laughs> Oh, so they uh, so Sierra Nevada blended them together for the ultimate warmer. I almost read that as ultimate warrior. Uh, yeah, the ultimate warrior. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Come on. Uh, our coffee no one... stout is a fusion of dark roast malts and rich cold brew coffee for Casey for layers of bittersweet, fruity, oh, dark chocolate yeah. and caramel like flavors. Obviously, ale yeasts, uh, different bittering hops. Nugget. Yeah. Fishing hops. Also nugget. nugget. Uh, malts, two-row pale, uh, caramel, chocolate, wheat, and brown. 
uh, and 6.2% ABV, 53 IBUs, which is that the highest for this whole? That's what whole I was pack? telling Brittany at dinner. I was like, you're going to be blown away because the coffee stout has the highest IBU of anything <laughs> in this pack. <laughs> uh, and a uh, long shot. Uh, Beer Advocate score 4.08 out of 5. Wow, that's a high score, too. This smells ridiculous. So, from other local oh. uh, cold brewed stouts that I've had, this hit like in the nose, hits that exact mark. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. love it. This. <laughs> this is everything I, I like about coffee without all the things I don't like about coffee. Mm-hmm. Oh, my so, God. I expected a lot more sweetness, and I didn't yeah. get it. I'm okay yeah. with it. <laughs> Super uh, I got, dry I got... and, and uh, acrid almost. Um, it really is a pure coffee flavor. So there is a big difference to be had, I am noticing, between the, the cold brew coffee stouts and a regular coffee stout. And the cold brew it's... coffee stout is really for the coffee lover. This tastes like well, cold brew coffee. You can tell. It goes back to what does that bag of coffee smell like when you open it up versus what does a cup of coffee that you drip made taste like? Yes. Um, and what does that smell like? And so the, I love the aroma of coffee beans. I could give or take on on or, or take or leave on um, true coffee, like actual drip oh, coffee. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal to me. Cold brew, though, it retains those same flavors that you get with a um just do, sticking your nose into a bag of coffee and that's what i like about it with this i stick my nose into the glass and it smells just like it and then i take a taste of it and it's sort of like a flat flavor there's not a whole lot there to, huh. to back it up the flavor isn't rounded like i would like it to maybe i would like this better if it were instead of just a standard stout maybe if it were a uh, milk stout on the back mm. side i think that was what i was really expecting mm. um even though it doesn't say anywhere on there milk stout uh, you know it's, you you heard stout and your your instinct was milk stout coffee stouts for me have always traditionally been milk coffee stouts and so that's what i thought mm. okay um, but this now, is I, a traditional stout if you like yeah. that version better than milk stout i will agree that it is much more like a uh uh, uh there's not a whole there's there's no real sweetness to it like it's like oh layers of bittersweet i'm not getting that i'm not really getting fruity um it is very much like dark chocolate though yeah yes that is the bitter quality i would attribute to this i like it if anything you hit it flavor and aroma as well um Mm. just not the sweetness that comes out of caramel yeah yeah there is Um, no sweetness in this that again I would almost say maybe that's fallen off in the time, but I don't think you would see that from a stout, not in this shorter window. I find it cool that they've used a little bit of brown malt, and I think they use that to round out some of the flavors on the back end because it's uh, if this recipe is written like normal ingredients lists on on most things, the things you use more of come first, and the things you use less of come last. Right. And brown malt being last, even after your chocolate malt your and your wheat malt, feel like they just used a little bit of it to round out the flavors and if that's the case i think it rounded out the flavor just right um the more i drink it after that first shock i, I approach it a little bit more appropriately i think the your, more I your like expectations it. Are, are getting more realigned yeah to what this beer is supposed to be um i, I like the way they've used that brown malt to round it out I, yeah, the right. oats stand out the most to me. The coffee and the oat. Hmm. Like, I would almost call this a founder's breakfast stout minus, again, the sweetness. Like, it just stands oats, that strong. Oats is usually the background to haul. <laughs> hmm. <sighs> now that we've had this coffee beer at 11, 10 at night, I won't be able to go to sleep. Um, as little caffeine as I usually drink, this is going to kill me. <laughs> Oh, no. She never has caffeine, yeah, and she'll uh, be fine. Yeah, I mean, well, I technically, I fa- mm. so I've given up, and I've gone to, like, decaf coffee, so I've had, like, you know, three yeah. to five milligrams of caffeine a day. Yeah. But that's about it. Like, it's, you know, so, but no, even this, if I have, like, coffee-related beer, it doesn't seem to still do anything to me, so. Well, it's... 
uppers and downers working in your system at the same time. Yeah, and the downers seem to win. <laughs> it seems. Um, I really like this beer. Um, again, I mean, we've covered like I'm not a huge fan of like the overly sweet stuff, which is really weird because like I have a sweet tooth. Like I am about desserts. It's kind of why I'm never going to lose that much weight. But like, <laughs> um, <laughs> but this is like. <sighs> It really does taste like, like you can taste the cold brew coffee. You can you can mm. taste the different notes in there. You can it it tastes very much like you opened a bag of coffee and you're you're I don't know tasting that smell <laughs> of the it. yeah that, that, that coffee yeah you're huffing <laughs> the coffee, um, but it, it it tastes very um very fresh like you're <laughs> like it's a very fresh cold brew coffee somehow. Well. Picturing someone just pouring coffee beans into a sock and then putting it over their mouth and just breathing it in. I'm just picturing Zach and Miri make a porno when they're just like above on him. The he, coffee goes, beans. he goes, Q effects, <laughs> and he's, they're like on the counter going at it, and he's just like throwing handfuls of coffee beans over on them. While they're doing it. Yeah. Um. But uh, to address chat real quick, uh, yes, uh, Gnome, uh, it is perfectly fine and encouraged to drink along, and I'm pretty sure Jungle Jim still has packs of this. Um, oh, it's so good. Right, we second. usually try to announce a little bit early so that you can go and pick up the packs. Uh, we, we usually pick them up, I don't know, somewhere between two and six weeks out, so you yeah. can go ahead and, and have enough time to search those out. So that's a pretty cool and uh, feature. We, we enjoy f those folks drinking along with us and saying, I absolutely hate this beer, and we're <laughs> raving about it. So uh, I, I always love that because I'm always pretty much sure that, that my tastes are wrong. So <laughs> That one person in chat, this beer is shite. Well, um, yeah, we, clearly we, he's right. We do have, like, the next um, – we, we need to get more of the video ones figured out, as we mentioned earlier. Um, well, but we got a news show coming up soon. So yeah. yes, I guess we yeah. forgot to bring that up in announcements. That's true. Uh, I forgot about that actually. Thanks to Patreon. <laughs> so you guys helped us hit our first goal in two oh, days. A lot quicker than we were expecting. <laughs> we were not prepared. <laughs> Just we were not prepared. As Illidan Sorry. said, we were not prepared <laughs> for what you guys uh, wanted. And so thanks to you all, we have to rush and get this new show together. And starting in February, uh, hopefully around yes. the first week of February, we're going to start rolling out a news-only weekly show because bi-weekly, we always fall behind on a lot of the news. So <laughs> yep. yeah. this will help us keep more up to date, and it might help shorten the main show a little bit. So we're not completely going to be cutting news out of there. There, there will you, still you be... You say that like we're not going to fill that time with just us if, if we do less news during that show that just means that i'm going to have more banter or more <laughs> jargon in there yeah uh, when we, we start talking about some of this stuff i want to make really bad puns just more of them yeah or we're gonna or we're gonna get off into like random like anyway do you guys see this game last night <laughs> <laughs> this book that you have you read i'm this not yet? opposed i'm not opposed okay to so not something we can speaking talk of about real quick speaking of real quick i was sitting around reading earlier and oh. just drinking beer and i was like but when did i become old <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh i had um an amazing old-fashioned earlier today Ooh. and i had a, so sort of special with the ingredients johnny drum bourbon I cannot stand as a sipping bourbon. I don't know if anybody else has had that out there, but it's a product made by Willet Distillery. I like a lot of their other stuff, hmm. but Johnny Drum is not a good sipping bourbon for me. Uh, people go crazy over it. Um, but whenever you added that to an old-fashioned, huh. um, it was an old-fashioned base. So well, I do mine as not the Wisconsin style, but I do mine with the traditional Kentucky way with an orange whole orange like an eighth of an orange <laughs> um, muddle that in there with two cherries and i use the luxardo cherries because i still have an entire because those are amazing know. yeah and yeah i have like a quarter of a jar left over they're 20 bucks a jar but they last forever so it's worth it that's way if you say jug <laughs> <laughs> oh, if they came in those jugs things. like holy Be like crap. a month's salary for a yeah. jug of those cherries so good um so muddle those with like a tablespoon of sugar and then um of course, your uh, bourbon, some ice. And I actually, the, the cool thing was I topped it off because I didn't have any club soda to top it with. 
I topped it off with some Dasani sparkling ah, in the yeah. tropical pineapple flavor. Oh. And it was delicious. Mm. Uh, I'm you not had, sure like... how I feel about pineapples in my old fashions. <laughs> so the Johnny Drum has sort of an orange flavor. So the old fashioned had the the orange from orange flavor from the orange and then the orange flavor from the bourbon plus the cherry. And then the pineapple made it almost like an upside pineapple upside down cake. Oh, that's fine. Oh, I yeah. do like those. <laughs> yeah, we'll make them next time you all are up or whatever. We'll make some just like I that. I need to but... buy like when you were saying that. I was like, I need to buy whole sugar cubes for making old fashions. Part of me just wants to do that for muddling. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. Like and that way that way it soaks in the bitter a little bit better than just oh, that was the other thing bitters. Um, yeah, I was wondering I what the bitter was. Just bring it Bitterman's. Out. Uh, Bitterman's uh, Oaxaca Mole bitters. Okay. So they had a little bit of a chocolatey um, type of flavor to them as well. Okay. So it was it was like dessert in a glass. You're getting uh, called out. No, yeah, saying. that's not an old fashioned. That's that's where I that's where I was starting to lean. But so it is it is based off an old fashioned. I will not <laughs> I will not call it an old fashioned, but it it's is a new based fashion. off of an old fashioned. New fashion. <laughs> uh. I'm with you on this. I do not. I do not consider an old fashioned. So I think we rushed through. Uh, what What have you guys been up to? We uh, We didn't really I mean, get to cover it. No, but I mean, not a whole lot. It's been been a lot of work. Uh, uh, I mentioned Casey had left some beer here. I don't know last month. I'm just now getting a chance to get to, and it was delicious. So. You can see those on Untapped, though. Just me going, oh, it's okay, it's okay. And I get to this most recent one. Oh, my God, yes! So, not that we talk about them too much, Tyler, um, but our local brewery also makes a beer specifically for the Derby. Only this one's based off of the most Kentucky drink ever, a mint julep. Yeah. Or, is or I was going to say, or as in Scotland, they referred to it when uh, someone tried to order it, the racist mojito. It's not wrong. <laughs> I mean, th this is kind of what I told all of my server, all the servers at uh, when I was a bartender to to call it. Like, I, I need one racist mojito. <laughs> Coming up. <laughs> yep. That's so sad. Um, uh, so, so what do we think of this Burmies. pack? Overall, oh. uh, do you want a, a full rating? Like, how would I rate these beers? Hmm. Running my hands across them. them. Um, reverse mm. order. Can you get of what the coffee we... stout by itself? Do what? Can you get that coffee stout by itself? No, it is oh, only available can't. in this pack. Ah. Okay. Huh. That changes things. Yeah, it does. It changes things. Uh, Actually, now if I was to put these in put these in order, I'd probably say coffee stout, pale ale, uh, holiday haze, and winter tide. Hmm. I'd I'd probably right. order them in reverse order of what we had. <laughs> like that's how I would run it. Coffee, holiday haze, actually maybe then pale ale and then the winter one because that because of the like intense ginger. And you? Oh no no no! Never mind. You were with me and not not caring too much for the winter. Yeah, it was so, it was hit or like I could go without the winter one, but I think the other three are reason enough to probably get the pack because. Hmm. The, the holiday haze specifically and the coffee stout cannot be found otherwise. I mean, the pale ale huh. you can get whenever, whatever, you know. But the other two, I think it's worth it enough. Now, of course, if you don't, if you are fine with ginger, go ahead and get this anyway because you might like the winter tide. I just wasn't a fan. So, personally, that's just fair. So, uh, I know like three fourths of us is off the caffeine oh, anybody yeah. else getting like this weird buzzy type caffeine buzz going on um, like this weird I, know. I can't okay. tell because i'm already buzzed from drinking I, I mean i was getting like this sleepiness almost from from the alcohol you know how like yeah you know your eyes start to feel like they're closing and everything and now that i've had this caffeine laden coffee stout I, i'm feeling like i don't know this this i'm feeling awake <laughs> i mean <laughs> Um, Getting a your little bit of this wind? like euphoric buzz going on. It's a little weird. I mean, I guess that's an effective <laughs> drink right there. <laughs> that's cold brew coffee. Um, that's mm. uh, oh, yeah. 
here's here's your new four loco guys. Mm. <laughs> Get that in a shot of bourbon. There, there you, you go. go. Well, add a shot of bourbon to anything. There you go. That's <laughs> it'll make anything better. <laughs> uh, How different is the holiday haze versus the hazy little thing? I don't know if I had the hazy little thing. I have not had the hazy little thing yet. Is that the new one? Uh, I believe so. That might be the new one. Uh, I know Holiday Haze was their first crack at it. Okay, so yeah, that probably is the new one. The one that we saw the commercial for that's really weird. But yeah. I bet it doesn't separate the same way. <laughs> so maybe, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, we got a little time to fill. Maybe we could go ahead and find that video in the background. They again use that acidulated malt in there as well. They use the same um, oats and acidulated with it. No caramel, though. They use Munich instead. Hmm. Um, finish it off with Citra Comet, which I do not know if I've ever had. Uh, Simcoe, Eldorado, and Mosaic. All the high dollar hops. So do you think that's playing into uh, the story we ran uh, last year about the hop farmers having overproduced on a lot of those big aromatic hops? And now you yeah. have so many of these hops available that these big brewers can, the, they're available and they can get them cheap to start producing these New Englands on mass, and if I recall, was that last season or that would be the hops that would finish up this this past fall? So yeah, yeah. that's the story uh, ran just ahead of this past harvest season. That would when make they were sense. saying that a lot of hop growers were going to be basically screwed with these hops, and they were going to offer them at big discounts, and that's when we were saying, oh yeah. Get ready for big, fruity, aromatic hops. A lot more than what you were used to, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, okay, no one was saying that Hazy Little Thing is the new one. I wanted to get a six-pack of it, and for some reason didn't. I don't know why now, but Hazy we are definitely going to have to... <laughs> we need to put Sim. together um, a mass market New England tasting and do a side to side with some other new England's not that we have a brewery in town that does them on a monthly basis. So we can get some good, some good, uh, fresh ones to compare it against. Let me give you uh, a little information here because, um, we talked last year about the hop harvest being, you know, going to be up because the weather was great and everything. Um, yesterday, uh, yesterday as of the end of December. So like right before Christmas. Okay. The 2017 National Hop Report was released. Reported hop production was up 20% from 2016. Woo! That is a huge growth in a market like that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Huh. Um, this year, Idaho, or last year, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington in 2017 totaled the record high of 104 million pounds versus 87 million pounds the year before. Woo-hoo. Yep. And the number of acres that was planted was only up 5%. So it was all based on good growing conditions. That, that wow. Or 15% on good growing t- conditions. Dang. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Idaho was but... the best one. Um, acreage increased in Idaho 24%. They don't just grow potatoes? Hmm. They do not, apparently. Turns out hmm. they grow hops as well. Oh, all right then. Both can be used to produce alcohol. All right. Uh, oh. Is that is that round us out? Um, I found the Sierra Nevada episode or video thing. Finally. Yay. Oh, okay. Mysterious is ah, a spreading yeah, through yeah, every. Hold on. <laughs> As the heat kicks on, so I can't hear anything. Okay. Um. Back it up. Can you? Yeah, you can. Back it up. Back it up. Wobble, baby. Wobble, baby. <laughs> Anybody? Oh God. Anybody? No. It's this beer, I swear. It's this beer. <laughs> Casey's tweaking off the coffee stout. He's tweaking. I don't drink caffeine. Like, it's very rare that Here I drink Sierra caffeine. Nevada I have one cup of coffee this brewing team is like hard past at work, six brewing months. The finest craft beers in the world. But something mysterious is afoot, spreading through every Not inch for... of the brewery. Happened for like 30 seconds. The haze craze. <laughs> This cloudy concoction calls out to be tasted. Mm. 
This hazy little thing is spreading beyond the brewery, across the nation, the even to your Doing neighborhood. It's so hazy. It sure <laughs> is, Billy. It's hiding in plain sight, waiting to wrap its hazy little hands around the pallets of drinkers everywhere. This is f***ing amazing! <laughs> Sierra Nevada invites you to make tonight a hazy one. They do this every time we do a new beer. So, yeah, uh... Here at Sierra it's, Nevada... It's, oh, Company, God, it's starting over again. Brewing the finest craft beers in the world. Oh, please. It won't. It's all the auto place. Play. The great enemy of everything. So, yeah, I mean, it's get ready. Uh, Sam Adams is going to have a hazy New England out this year. I mean, every major brewer has got them lined up, ready, ready to throw them at us. And I'm here ready to them? drink them. Huh? What else is there? I mean, there, there's no new craze. And, and for, that's what people crave is the new. For two years now, this has just yeah. been building and building. And like last year, I predicted we were going to see it. Last year. Well, <laughs> but again, that was, was why off it, year. it was so hard this year to make predictions because nothing crazy has really happened this year that hasn't been done before. Yeah, you can take right. the safe route and just go, Sours, Sours are going to hit the mainstream. Because that's all anyone says every year. Oh, we're going to see Sours make it big this year. And then they never do. Hmm. And that's a problem that I, that I have with, with the sour market as it is. Nobody's putting in post-boil bugs. They're doing sour mashing and sour, um, sour, basically overnight souring through the use of uh, additional bacteria that gets boiled and killed in the brew kettle. Um, because they don't want to infect their other beers. And I understand that. That's no big deal. But at the same time, let's not let those sours take away from the fact that there are much better sour beers and sour beer breweries out there that are that have been doing this for years. I mean... Know, hundreds of years, really. Yeah. You got the European you, sours that we find it kind of hard to find sometimes. And then you've got, on this side of the pond... Really, New Glarus kind of running, yeah. running things when it comes to those tart sours, and we're just out of market, and it's hard to get a hold of it here. Yeah, West Coast, you've got um, you've got your uh, Rare Barrel doing it on the West Coast, and uh, Michael Tomsmere uh, doing some of the stuff out there. Uh, it just we're we're not seeing it on the East Coast as big as what we would see. The Midwest has has went with this Northeast IPA thing and fruity kettle sours, and so I'm not I'm not on that boat just yet. I'm not on board, hmm. and so I want to see some of the real true. You know, we had to sit on this for three years for it to develop the right flavors and the right character. Um, it takes a little bit longer. We don't make a whole lot of money during that time, but it's the right thing to do. I think like we're probably like us two particularly are probably more on board because we have a local brewery who has been doing the New England style for, gosh, a couple of years now, maybe even longer. And they've they've kind of, I don't want to say perfected it, but they've gotten it down to where it, it works. Like, you can, you know what the flavor is supposed to be. So I think that we're, we're more on board on that, that New England style train because we've got someone who's doing it what seems to be doing it well um i will give you one brewery that used to do it well on the east coast i just remembered okay Who? wicked weed oh that's <laughs> sad oh, for sours yeah god rest their soul yeah. yeah i mean that was that was the group that was out there doing true beers that were were done the right way they were they, you know they hadn't even been around long enough to have a three-year-old beer that that they blended back and and did you know did your your standard uh goose from uh, what is it goose, the goose. into the, the lambic style where you blended and everything so um not a real good one at least uh, but uh call me out on that go ahead call me out bro <laughs> but uh you know then they got bought out so where we go from there yeah oh yep. and chris the story so don't spoil it but the story Wait. that we're going to talk about when is that going to be that will be our next audio episode that we're going to okay. discuss that. So, so listen to the hops episode and you'll get to hear about some, uh, our, our thoughts on some new, uh, bells stuff. 
Yeah, and no, we can talk about this post show, but uh, no, I'm bringing up our local brewery here in Cincinnati, Urban Artifact, competes on level New Glarus any day, and I will say that because yes. there are those two are breweries. F- who- Urban Artifact, unless I'm mistaken, those are mostly fast sours. They're nothing that's been sitting around for years, and that's right. There's certain flavors that develop in in a barrel over those that you can't get. You get a lot of that early on. Um, solventy like aroma and, and flavor and but once you get later on into that process those kind of disappear and you get some really cool fruitiness that it, it really takes those nail polish flavors and and really takes them urban uh, moving artifacts into something else urban artifacts relatively new though like oh, i've yeah. only they've not like, had time started... like we don't know what all they've got cooking. Been like a well year no might no one knows so, what i mean cooking. some of that stuff you're looking for they just maybe haven't that's true yet and i hope that's so. the case i hope i really do hope that that they've got some sort of um wild yeast long-term aging that's going to be a little bit more mellow type so their in. wild spontaneous stuff has just started to come out with the dinosaur series and holy crap all those beers are the most amazing sours i've ever had yeah and it, it goes back to and, and we'll, we can get off here in just a minute but um it goes back to the fact that if you're doing a wild spontaneous ferment, the yeast strains that are here in uh, in this part, north northeast Kentucky, or in southern Ohio, are totally different than those that are in Belgium or oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. or France or, or wherever um, yeah. in Europe that you're looking. So it's a totally different flora of microbacteria um, and fungi that's that's going to be creating these beers. So it, it's not going to be the same. Right, but at the same time, I would like to see beers that at least possess some of the same qualities mm-hmm. of those beers. That's fair. All right, I think we are coming at time to close this thing out, and we'll continue this discussion in post-show. All right. All right. So, Casey? <laughs> oh, I was waiting for music or something. I don't know. You yeah, can visit us, haveadrinkshow.com. Haveadrinkshow.com. For useful links and info about us, also look for Have a Drink Show on social media, twitch.tv, and YouTube. Don't forget, don't forget you can tell us your uh, your favorite drink, ask a question, or just leave some general feedback. You can use the email address, feedback at haveadrinkshow.com. You, know, you can also use the feedback page on the website, and I still stand by sandwich board on the street corner. Also a good way to let us know. Indeed. I mean, uh, board if you promise to stand on the street corner. <laughs> All joking and fun aside, My guys. Street like... corner or someone else's? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make a joke after that. That would be inappropriate. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. All joking and fun aside, I'd like to remind everyone to please drink responsibly. Don't drink and drive. All that jazz. You know what? We say it every time. We'll continue to say it. Yes. Don't drink and text and drive. Any of those, yes. <laughs> don't combine the two. Yes. Or any any two out of three. Probably not good combine. Don't do. Probably not. Don't drink and text. That's a bad one too. Ooh, yeah, yeah real See? bad one. I think our, our our talking about it is is proving the point more so. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, be sure to check us out every Saturday um, at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Or 10 p.m. You know. With the exception of today. <laughs> or 10:30. Uh, at Twitch. This is an outlier. Yeah, today, today's a little weird, but uh, twitch.tv slash have a drink show. And remember to check out our Patreon once again, patreon.com slash have a drink show if you would like to support what we do. Uh, once again, um, I'm Brittany Lee Walker. I'm Justin Frazier. I'm Christopher Walker. I'm Casey Price, and we'll see you next time. Yep. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.